Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and it has been quite a while since I played my last chapter number two of Anno 1800 using the solo campaign rules that is. And it seems there is demand so you guys wanted me to continue so here I am diving directly into chapter three which loosely translates into with letter and seal and it's more like a complete game. There are still not all rules in that chapter as, as you might remember if you watch previous episodes of my solo playthrough here from chapter to chapter we were adding more and more stuff in this one we are definitely or finally able to use our ship so that's definitely a huge thing we are not able to use them for everything but we can do at least some level of exploration which is kind of cool i have fantastic news hannah is all excited the queen is ready to grant us trade by her seal with this we can officially travel any body of water and the world is open to us she puts on a serious face. Maybe this way we can also find out what really happened to father. Then I've come at the right time. The distinguished gentleman speaks up. I am Sir Archibald Plake, and as the Queen's ambassador, I'm here to give you her permission to trade. If you can at least show me a frigate and a schooner you intend to use in Her Majesty's, in Her Majesty's name. As you are about to delegate the task, Ahan comes by. Dear friends, I have a message for you from Madame Kahina, retrating the choicest goods from around the world and invites you to browse. Perhaps you should pay her a visit, for trading partners can be powerful allies. The goals of this particular scenario are as follows. We have to get at least 50 influence points through population cards. So that's completely new. So far we were mainly playing those cards and had to do stuff. And we have to build at least one trade ship and one exploration ship of strength to each. We are starting with level one ships, but yeah, they will help us. But in order to win this game, we have to have at least two more ships. And in order to do so, we also have to build a level two dock or shipyard that is because only then are we allowed to also go with level two ships in this scenario in this chapter we are still not able to build a level three shipyard the same is true for the trade and the exploration ships down here these are still kind of off limits but overall we have much more resources to deal with and even though those purple ones where you typically need an investor for, they're off limits, but we are still allowed to trade for those in case some of our cards would require those. And we have really now all the cards in the deck, all minus those, um, I think, expedition, exploration cards, that is, I think expedition cards, that is, they're still not available here. And we can at least partner use this action here. We can definitely go for another island here which definitely, I think we might need it as we need to build more industries during this particular scenario. As for our timer, we have 30 cards, which equal 30 actions. We could gain additional actions through cards as a bonus pretty much, but right now I think, I, or I don't think we have any of those cards in our hand. We will have a look at those in a second. This is the normal difficulty level. If you want to play it harder, you can, I think, remove three cards or so yeah three cards that is but as the last chapter was incredibly close i think we had one or two more cards left yeah let's not worry about that too much for now in respect to the setup this is now more or less the standard game so we start with four farmers three i think workers and two of those are artisans i believe they are referred to and we have the same amount of cards in our hand again we didn't remove any cards from the decks this time so in theory we could end up with cards that we may still want to build for the victory points i mean they still come with eight or three points respectively and the name of the game is 50 points here i'm coming from those cards we are also able to use now all the bonuses from, the, from those cards that's definitely a cool thing and yeah definitely much more going on now in as of chapter three so i'm really looking forward to that um similar to chapters one and two we don't have to play all of those cards we simply have to make sure we are making it to 50 points in total and yeah we definitely need to add more workers to the city simply because otherwise we are running out of cards and there is no alternative way getting extra points 
in this scenario. So we have to get more workers out. Okay, and I think with that being said, we should be pretty much ready to go. I haven't played this scenario here before. So again, I have no clue what my pace should be. So yeah, live and learn, I say. And yeah, let's get cracking. So let's look at some of the low hanging fruits. We do have a lot of characters who require beer and we also have a lot of characters who require bread. So I guess getting for those two industries relatively early in the game may sound like a solid idea. She comes with three trade icons, which is amazing actually, of course. Um, so we definitely want to go for her. And then again, up next might be, hmm, I don't know, maybe her uh, or him, sorry. <laughs> well, he comes with a red worker. That's pretty solid because red workers give us more points. They're much more difficult to yeah, quote unquote build or bring out. Okay, yeah, let's start with beer then, I guess. And as a quick reminder for beer, we need some hop, I guess, and some coal. And again, I'm a little bit, uh, should I go for the cheap coal first? Because again, especially for those, let's say very basic resources, we need a lot of coal. So maybe just to prep us accordingly, I want to go with the cheap coal first. First, and in order to go for cheap coal, we have to come up with one lumber. Yeah, let's do that first. Let's prep our industry. So again, we have to come up in order to build this um, yeah, coal industry, the more efficient coal industry, we have to come up with one lumber. And again, we have lumber here in order to produce those resources. Just again, as a small reminder, we are only producing those resources virtually. So whatever we are producing right now we have to consume otherwise it's gone so we have activated this lumber industry with one of our farmers here this is completely sufficient so we are flipping this to the other side and we can either put it here on an empty space not on a we can put them on the coastline but not in the water uh, we could overbuild the existing industry here mm, that's rad that's incredibly expensive no let's overbuild the industry for now later on we could get rid of it because at some point in time we may no longer need coal or so but let's see about that but that was basically only a preparational turn and that's already the end of our turn so we are discarding our very first card from the deck here and then yeah moving into the next turn but I guess now it's really time to go for beer again now we need coal we could can now use our more efficient coal production and we need the hop or the wheat or whatever it is what we need to produce the beer so let's grab this tile so again we need the hops and we need the coal again we will go for the cheaper coal normally this would require a red worker red are these artisans which are definitely more expensive to whatever pay for and produce them so i think that was definitely worth it so we are flipping this to the other side and i guess for now let's not overbuild stuff just yet hmm. no right now we are still okay i guess so let's leave it here we may want to consider later on overbuilding our industry here because we only need it one more time i believe yeah but again that was our action you know the game is moving really fast we are discarding those cards and in this particular scenario the discarded cards don't do anything as far as i understood i haven't really checked out all the scenarios in the book but there are scenarios which trigger certain things it seems depending on what you are discarding so at some point in time it may not be uh, may be important actually what cards you are drawing and where you are discarding those at least that's how i understand it as we are going to yeah bring her out we need bread yes and for bread we need again coal and that's the coal so coal is basically out right now we don't have any money no we don't and we need some more wheat right or hops in this case but that's okay we have produced it here accordingly so we have bread we have beer the problem is we don't have any um, workers anymore or laborers i'm not sure what, what those are called in the English, but you get the idea the blue cubes in this case um i think yeah that was the code that was the hops and i think as of now we could now in fact 
I think we can overbuild this right away, but again, there is no real rush. We can still do that with our next action. And now we really have to think about what we are going to do because I'm not sure if I want to go for a, I think it's a festival, right? Basically passing turn to get our workers back. We can still do at least one or two more actions before we are calling it. But yeah, we have to discard our card. So we're already three turns in the game. And in theory, I could now bring her out. The problem is in order to produce beer and bread, we would need two blue workers. We only have one left now. And we don't have any gold to reactivate our workers. So you can always spend the amount of gold points to bring cubes back up in case you don't want to pass early. But I think in this case, again, we don't start the game with any gold whatsoever. But we can start to prepare for other industries. Um, sausage, problem is for sausage, we also need coal. So this would have been a perfect case maybe to not overbuild the industry because then we could have used uh, the coal production one more time. But again, we have so much coal still to do that I'm right now not so concerned about this. What else do we need? We need these bricks. But we have bricks, so we can... Huh, we, oh, that's that's a potential thing. That's good, that's good. Let's actually bring out a card. Which one? I think this was her. This is good. This is really good. So we have the bricks. We need an artisan because it's not automated yet. So we have to use more skilled labor. And we need one bread and we still have one blue meeple up here. So that's enough to build her. And I think right now there's no reason not to use her right away. So we are flipping her. This, this is our first three points of the game. We are on our way to victory. Hooray. But we are adding two more workers into our work pool, which is amazing. And then we can, oh, we have to actually draw two more cards from the normal deck, not from our time deck, obviously. So we really have to remember that. So let's check those guys out. And I do think, no, we still don't have the sausage, actually. but we have more blue workers. So maybe something else is doable. Oh yeah, I really like this game. Again, I'm already on fire here. But playing that card was our action. So we have to discard our next card here. Mm, and then, yeah, we still have workers now. So there is no need to really go for faster. Of course, we still have those guys down here. Let's not forget those. Let's not forget. Now we have, we can trade, we can explore. So incredibly important. And right now, I'm actually thinking about, we need a purple worker. Where do we get a purple worker? For upgrade, upgrades, most likely. But first of all, I think I want to explore. And in case you don't know, you can basically explore twice. You can go to, I think, yeah, foreign, this remote islands, for example, where you get very special trade commodities, which we don't have in this scenario. So this is pretty much grayed out. We can go to the old world in this case. The first old world card costs us one of those. We have one of those from our exploration ship. So we are this not really discarding. We are parking it next to our board. When we take the festival action, then we get them all back. Second one, two, and so on. Maximum is four of those. And then we are drawing one of those old world tiles. In a normal multiplayer game, I pretty much as of game two house ruled it that you will always draw two and choose one because again they're really not or not all of those tiles are as useful as others they all come with one bonus but sometimes this bonus doesn't really help you at all so in this case it's really much better to really give every player two and pick one in this solo scenario because again i think it has to feel challenging I guess I will simply live with what I draw. So I will not use that house rule in this case. So let's reveal it. But that's an amazing one. That is truly an amazing one. So this one comes. That's the gold platinum bonus that you could get another exploration ship. No, that's truly amazing. And I really did shuffle this deck like crazy. So we have just extended our little home port. So we have four more, let's say, countryside spaces where we can place more industries. We have one more space for ship, but we definitely get 
one of those things and we are adding one of those exploration tokens right away we cannot use it because the next um, old world island requires us to spend two of those but for the next round we have this fella here who, who requires two of those and comes with three trade tokens that's pretty amazing actually you know that was that was an amazing draw so we are discarding our card for the actions already five cards in and then i guess we could actually bring her out we have beer we have bread we have the workers now yeah let's do that so again we need beer we need bread perfect we are playing her here so that's six points out of 50. we are not going to activate her um, because whenever you're activating a character which comes with some of those trade tokens or with exploration tokens you have to use them basically before you are going for this festival and if you're not activating the card then you can basically leave her like this and i I think right now I don't need any more trade token. I mean, we still have two down here, which we haven't used yet. And hmm, are we going to use it? That's the question. I mean, we still have two more workers here. Mm, and we could potentially at least build another industry. And I really want the sausage out. Again, the sausage requires a pick, which is not a problem. We can produce picks. We need coal. We don't have any more coals out there. We can, we don't have a coal production, but of course we can trade. And in order to trade a resource, you have to spend those trade tokens here. And the amount of trade tokens is dependent on the color of the worker that it takes to produce that resource. In a multiplayer game, you would ask around, hey, does anyone have the, let's say, cheap coal industry? It doesn't matter if they use it or not. If it's out there, you can use it. And then again, a blue worker would be one trade resource. In this scenario here, I really don't know if we go for the cheap trade, if we are allowed to go with the cheap trade. So are we basically considering that someone has built the blue coal industry here? So this would only mean one of those. Or do we have to go for the expensive one out there? Um, I could imagine that there is some errata on the geek, but I don't know. But just to be sure, so that you don't call me a cheater, I will go now for the, because again, normally that's a red industry, the coal. I will assume, because I cannot trade with myself, I will assume that the others, there's no real other player in this case. So I will always go for the more expensive resource here, for the more expensive um, industry. So we have to spend two of those trade tokens here. So we have virtually traded in one coal, because it's a red worker that would, would be required. And normally this player would gain a gold. We There is no other player, so we can basically ignore that. And I think now we should be okay basically overbuilding this industry over here. We have the sausage of those guys go over here. This was our action for this round. And I think with only one red worker left, there is literally nothing we can do. So I guess we have to go for a festival. So those guys will move back up. We have a lot of blue workers, which is good, which is good. We need those. Those guys will move back up. We get our trade tokens back. But that was the action for our round, which means we are discarding our next card here. And I really hope I'm not messing this up in respect to the tire. But now my full workforce is back. I have all the options. The world is my oyster. And yeah, but what am I going to do first? And I guess I want a purple worker out as soon as possible. Don't ask me why, but I want a, a purple worker out. So we need basically bricks and we need a sausage. We have it both. So let's look at the card again. So we need the expensive bricks. There are more cheaper bricks out there, but we don't need that many bricks. So I think I'm okay with those. Um, and here again, it's something which I don't know. Am I allowed to trade with others? Am I supposed to assume they're taking the cheaper ones or so but again in this case let's not worry too much about this we need one blue for the sausage here which means we have created this guy which means we are now through nine points in out of 50. Um, we are flipping this guy over immediately this comes with a again it's oh i think that's an engineer 
And yeah, for an engineer, we have to come up with another of those cards. And yeah, these guys are really ex incredibly expensive or difficult to bring out. And in this case, they even demand stuff which we are not able to produce. But keep in mind, even though we cannot build the industry, we can still assume that some of the players has it. So for a red worker, we could trade this rum resource still for that card, which would be worth eight points. Okay then, let's discard our next card. And now I do remember why I wanted this purple um, worker here, the engineer, because the level two dock shipyard needs it um, in order. We simply have to discard one. We need some lumber, we need some bricks. I think we should be able to build it. Yeah, let's go for it right away. So we have to build the industry in basically in the shore. Here we cannot simply build it here, for example. Again, kind of makes sense. We need some bricks, which we have here, but this means all our red workers are now, yeah, they are gone. We need some wood, that's definitely not a problem. And we need to pretty much exhaust our engineer in this case, but this allows us to flip over this industry here. So from the now on, when we are building ships, we can now also go for level two ships and we need two of those. I mean, we got a second ship, but unfortunately these two combined do not count as a level two ship. They're simply two level one ships, but we can still use them pretty well, I guess. Okay, then let's discard our next card and then we can think about bringing out our new guy here. For a beer and a sausage, we would gain another artisan. And I think let's go for him. So that's the sausage. That's the beer, which is enough to bring him out. We are activating him also right away. He comes with a red artisan and we get a card for that. In a normal multiplayer game, adding more cards could be a problem because you are ending the game when you are com your, your hand, is, hand of one player is empty, then they would get the bonus seven points and whatnot. And there are also some very end of game scoring cards which would um, penalize you for having cards in your hand. That's why sometimes that's not the best thing to get more cards. But in this scenario, okay, that's a nice one because not only comes she with six, eight points, but we also get a bonus action when we are enabling her. But of course, she's also extremely difficult to be on. The beer is not the problem, but the, the light bulb here and the sewing machine might be a problem. But yeah, we will take her into our hand. We are discarding our next card. And by the way, we are already 10 cards cards in which means we are one third through the game. I cannot really tell you if it's good or not. Uh, again, I have no feeling of the pace of these solo scenarios here, but yeah, you will simply have to wait and see. Looking at my cards, my main problem is that I don't have any cards that would give me gold. And I think we have discarded at least one. Let me check. Let me check. Yes. Oh, at least two, actually. I think the first two cards we discarded were gold cards. And yeah, getting gold is could be crucial because it again it allows us to reactivate our workers, but we didn't get those. So that's at least could be a concern. But on the other hand, we do have some good trades out there. So I think that's still not bad. So mm, Maybe I should start looking at level two ships now already. I think that's actually pretty doable. At least a trade ship level two should be buildable. The problem um, with those is, um, ah, no, we only have one level two shipyard. So we could, when you produce ships, you can produce as many ships as you have shipyards. Right now I have a level one and a level two shipyard. If I would have two level two shipyards, I would have been able to produce both of them if I would be able to come up with the resources here, of course. I still could now argue if I want to go for this and that because I think it's not possible either because again, I don't have gold. On the other hand, I could still trade it. And again, being efficient in respect to the resources might be key. We need the two sails. Now we also can't go for the two sails. No, I think, mm, ah, I still, I still think Thing that might be let's go for it it's really not as efficient but um, ah, let's do it let's do it so we need ah we don't have no we can't do it we don't have 
Oh, we don't have two red resources. Yeah, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. Again, I could still trade it though. I could still trade a red sail. Again, I will go for the more expensive resource to trade for. So that would be two trade resource. I would gain two back. So that's not the problem. I still have a red one here. And the third would be wood, which is not a problem. Let's do that. Let's do that. So we are getting one sale from our thing. Then we need a crate. We don't have the crate as a red resource. So we need to expand two of our trade tokens here. And we need one lumber. So we have basically built this ship nicely done. It comes directly with two trade tokens. That's definitely something. And again, we have still this card which we could activate for three more if we need those. And that's basically the end of our actor. It was a purple one. That, that hurt. That really that did hurt. And that's basically the end of our turn. And again, I think we need more workers now in order because again, they could come with more cards that would give us gold, for example. I still think we need some gold. The problem is I need um, canned food, which is mm, now nah, we could go for canned food. We could go for the booze, actually. That's possible because we need coal and we need potatoes. I think that's possible. Let's do that. And yeah, do we need do we need something that we may not need, actually? So I think Think, do we want to overbuild? That's what I'm trying to say. I think for now, let's not. I think we have enough, I guess. So let's build it here. Again, we need the potato that's over here. A farmer, we need the coal, which we have here. So this allows us to build a booze. Perfect. But again, that was our action. Our three trade tokens. And didn't he write um, Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire? I don't know. Looks like it. And yeah, that was our turn, actually. We are down to only two workers here, but we still have two trade tokens and we still have two exploration tokens. So I think we are still kind of far from taking another festival action now. At least one more action should be possible. And I'm thinking of bringing this fella out for one booze and one beer. We don't have the resources for beer or for boost doesn't really matter but we can still trade let's do that and i'm really concerned about my pace i really should look for the more advanced cards now actually i still think yeah i'm not really doing particularly well here actually but okay let's stay on target for this round maybe i can still change the pace i mean this would bring us to 12 points that's basically yeah close or nearly over a fifth of the gold so not great but okay we need some booze schnapps here and we need beer we don't have any more blue workers blue workers is one thing so we do assume that one of the phantom players does have beer out there so we have traded this and this allows us to build this fella and i think we will activate him right away so this comes with two blue workers. So maybe there is something else we can do then. And for each worker that you're adding to your homeland, you're also adding two more cards. Oh, finally, we got some gold and another purple work. Okay, I'm really happy. I'm really happy with those two cards. Okay, oh, I think yeah, I have to discard a card, of course. Let's not forget that. And then we are going for this industry here, the clothing industry. And right now I still don't feel like overbuilding existing industry. We could go for the thing because that, that could be a potential because I don't think we need a level one shipyard anymore. Let's actually do that. So we are building it here, but we have to come up with one um, yarn here and we need one coal, which we still have from a blue worker. So yeah, let's overbuild this here. So we can now build blue or the working clothes. That's pretty cool. We still have to discard a card. So red worker would have been out of the game for good. And then we are down to one blue worker, but I still think we should be able to go for this fella now. 
yeah because we need the booze or we need the thing and we still have one more trade token down here so for whatever for the booze it's blue resource we need to spend one of those trade tokens here and we need one blue for the clothes in this case and we are activating this guy right away for three points and this comes with finally some gold which we can later on use to reactivate. It's really crucial if you're really lacking one or two workers, then having gold is extremely, extremely powerful. We would still gain uh, three points per three gold at the end of the game. But again, the rules specifically say for this scenario, we, our 50 points need to come from those cards. So we do not really care about anything else in this case. We still have some trade tokens which we could use from the card, but ah, we have this here. Maybe we should, yeah, we still have two trade uh, exploration tokens here. We could go for another um, old world island. On the other hand, we could also simply go for this fella. And I think that's what I want to do instead. So we need to spend two of these exploration tokens. We are not going to activate this guy here, which is that. And I guess that's basically it now. So let's spend the card. No, oh, did I forget one? I might have forgotten one. And actually I do think I forgot something because at least once, I think I have to discard one more card. I think I forgot one. I think I forgot one. So if I'm losing with one to view or if I'm winning with one too many, one left then yeah, take this victory or <laughs> this result with an asterisk. But I think now we should be able to call. Yeah, let's go for a festival. All those guys will come back and there's no penalty whatsoever having an amazing amount of these workers here. This guy goes back too. All those things will also reactivate. We need a level two exploration ship at some point in time, but also should hope this guy also needs to go there. This was our turn. This was our festival. So we are discarding this card. I think we are now at least, I think, I, I think it's now 17 cards out or so. So we have 13 more turns to go. Unbelievable. Okay, up next we, I think I want another purple um, engineer. Therefore we need bread and we need, I think that's fabric. Also it's not paper on the roll, it's really fabrics or cloth in this case, which we have to trade for a red resource that is. But I still think let's go for her. So let's see, the bread is, I think, yeah, down here. And again, this paper, ha, now I said it myself, no, this cloth here comes in red and blue and again I will go for the more expensive one which is now a red trade resource so I have to spend two of my trade resources or trade tokens here because again that's the red resource up here but that was basically taking care of her we are immediately activating her which gives us another engineer and comes with another advanced card. And wow, another bonus action, but we need to come up with six exploration points. That's massive. Okay, before we move on, I think it's time to build our next ship. Let's discard the card, of course. Let's not forget this. And in order to build the level two warship exploration ship, yeah, it's very peaceful in Anno 1800, at least in the board game version. Maybe in the expansion, we will see some more combat <laughs> coming up. Um, yeah, we need still cannon on an exploration ship. It's like the Enterprise. I mean, it's the most armed um, science ship out there. And we need to spend one purple worker. Do we have, oh, we don't, have, oh, we do have three. We do have three. No, okay, let's, go for it and again we have basically shut down our level two shipyard in this case we can only build one level two ship in this case so we need a sail not a problem we need some lumber also not a problem we need a cannon which we don't have we need to trade it cannons are definitely purple no they're red resources actually they're only red resources just notice no this standard cannon is a red resource which means we only need to activate two of trade tokens here that's okay i guess and then we still need basically a purple engineer 
to flip this one over, but this has taken care of this one. So we are now at four exploration tokens in total. So two more, and we might really consider going for this fella. Again, getting extra actions is a huge thing in this game, uh, but that's our action. We are still in the standard 20 cards, but for not much longer. And I think overall points wise, we are not great, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times 24 points. So 50% on our way, but more than 50% through the deck. Good thing is we have satisfied the condition of one of our things, of our goal. So we have two level two ships, a trade ship and an exploration ship that is here and here. So now we can start looking for for let's say the not so low hanging fruits here. We cannot trade um, these resources here, by the way, those exploration tokens. That's definitely a pity. We are not allowed to do that. This fella here or this lady here, sorry, I didn't see the, the artwork. We need clothing, which we have. We need the rum and we need the fur coats. These are both red resources, so we need four trade tokens, which would be a little bit waste for this round. Mm, what do we have? But the same is true here. This gramophone, that's also no gramophone. That's a purple one, so we need three. So this could be even more worth it now. Is it? No, we still have to spend too many cards. So maybe we still want to go with some lower hanging fruits first. Maybe some upgrades. Would this help us in any way? Or do we want more cards? Hmm. For upgrades, we don't get anything extra. What about this? No, this is also too expensive. We have the beer, we can't get the light bulb and we don't have the sewing machine, which is too. Mm. Sorry for my long babbling here. Do we need the soap? Soap is also only needed once. So, oh, can we maybe go for another level two ship trade ship? Maybe that could help us on the long run. Or we go for another exploration ship because this could bring us eight points. Eight points and an extra action. I think that's actually worth it. At least I hope. Let's go for it. So again. We need a sail, which we have. We need some lumber, which we have. Again, we need the cannon, which we don't have, but we have the purple engineer, which is good. We need to trade, and this is again two. We don't have any trade tokens out, but we do have our cards here. So we are flipping one of those guys over, or we are basically placing these now, though we are activating those, which means they now come with three of those. We are spending two from those in order to satisfy the cannon here. And then, yeah, we have basically built this ship, which comes with two more of those. Oh, that's pretty amazing. We should somehow try to use this before we are going for a festival, but I think that's still okay. That's still, even if we lose, that's not the end of the world, I guess. But that was our action. And yes, final last 10 turns. You must be kidding me. But now we are definitely spending basically six of our exploration tokens now to build this fella here. Um, that comes with eight points. I mean, that's really a huge thing. And we don't have to use him right away, actually. We can, I mean, it doesn't really hurt us to activate him, not because, again, we are simply losing. It's simply a race against time. So when we are doing this, doesn't really matter too much, at least in this case. For a multiplayer game, timing can be incredibly crucial. So I guess, yeah, let's simply do that. So we are taking another action. So we're activating him, which means we are not revealing a card right now. We are revealing the card when we are doing our next action, that is. And in theory, our next action could be simply to go for a festival, of course. And uh, But I still think about getting some upgrades. Can we get upgrades? We have the crate and we have the sausage. And here we would get, I think let's go for, I think we don't need that many blue workers now. Yeah, let's go for this. So we are activating the crates, the goods, and we need some sausage down here. 
and then we are basically activating this card right away which gives us three upgrades and the upgrades need to come from either green farmers or workers i want i think i want more artisans here so we are simply removing three of those and they're getting trained upgraded into artisans because we have not added cubes we simply have exchanges we are not getting extra cards but i still think that was worth it and now this was our bonus action we are discarding our card here and i think then we have nine more turns to go and if i calculated things correctly we should be at 35 points already so i think think we are in a relatively good shape now and we still have some good cards out there we don't have any more trade oh, we have four trade tokens here so let's let's not get too worried about that one right now we have to use it before we pass this one we can leave it here and i do think we could go with her next because she could give us eight points right yes and uh, we would require four trade tokens because both the rum and the fur coats are both red resource and again to trade those um we need to expend uh, two trade tokens each which we could produce now yeah let's do that okay we need some of those clothing which we have not a problem then we need to come up with rum which is two trade resources one is here then we are activating the other card basically um, so we have one, then it's two, that's the one resource, and then it's the other one resource here, which means we have now fully leveraged both of those cards here. But then again, that's not a problem because we just added six more trade tokens here, which again, it's totally on us when we are going to activate that card or not. But that's eight more points, and I think we should be at 43 points. So one more of those. And I think we should have made it through this scenario. Let's discard our card here. That's a nice card. That's a nice effect for the multiplayer version of the game. Because when you play this guy and you have to activate him right away, because that's what the exclamation mark here means, then you can pretty much discard two cards from your hand and you don't have to play them, which could maybe end the game, for example, that gives you seven points right off the bat and you see others are not that far. So, Having control over the end of the game is a real crucial thing in this game. But yeah, um, that was basically only our card, which we discarded from the stack. Okay, we have three artisans, one worker here, two farmers. And we still have a lot of trade tokens. And I think we could maybe, could we win this scenario? I think we can win it here, actually. So what do we need here? We need soap, we need coffee. So we need to trade all three of those. For this, we need to trade only those two. That's five trade tokens we would need because again, the gramophone here is a purple commodity. And for purple or for things that require purple workers, you need to spend three trade tokens. And the other one, the coffee is simply a red resource here, which would require two of those trade tokens. Again, we cannot build the coffee product because we cannot get access to coffee beans. That might be maybe as of chapter four, we might have access to these colonies or so. I don't really know. But yeah, right now we, we, still, we can still trade those resources. So I guess, yes, we should be able to, in, fa in fact, end the game. Yes, I could continue to play actually and play more cards out, but what's the point? So we need one brick. We have that, we have the artisans. Then we need um, the gramophone, which requires, so we have to activate our card here. One, two, three, four, five, and six six let's slide her over again that's a purple resource so we have to spend three of her then we need the coffee which is two so we still have one left but this is enough now to build her and again that's another six trade tokens we can build and overall this has brought us to 51 points so we had 43 uh, points in here from those cards plus eight 
um, that's basically 51 points and we still do have workers so we still could move on but I think again what's the point here uh, let's definitely get rid of this card so we still had at least from my normal counting seven cards here maybe I forgot it once or twice so let's say we would have been here so we are still I think in an okay shape we can still consider this as a win amazing so let's have a look at our text here Sir Archibald Blake's expression is hard to decipher these ships should be up to the task he places the royal seal on the trade permit I have had the pleasure of admiring other ships entirely but they are after all your first you are not quite sure whether that was a compliment or a rebuke Anyway, we were successful with our two goals here. We have 51 in 50 influence points, at least 50 influence points, and we have one trade ship and an exploration ship of strength to each. Amazing, amazing. I still think that this chapter three is more of an introductory scenario because now we are really dealing with the trade. We are dealing with the exploration. So I would not consider this to say, hey, this game is too easy. I don't think that's the case again I was playing on the let's say lower difficulty level I was still relatively lucky in the cards I was able to get I could trade relatively well so I think overall everything went pretty smooth and yeah I do know the game quite a bit actually but I, I really do think that with later scenarios the difficulty will definitely ramp up and again there is a good portion of randomness in respect to the cards that you're getting that's what i really like about this game compared to brass for example which is feels a little bit more static but then also comes with those action cards which um, are really turning this otherwise highly strategic game into somewhat more tactical elements which i really do enjoy and yeah i'm a big fan of martin wallace as a game designer uh, he really has brought out some some amazing games and yeah this one is no different here and yeah that's again uh the third chapter of my playthrough of anno 1800 and again i leave it a little bit up to you if you want me to continue my journey again i will not play it the next day or so i will always take some time in between chapters here but yeah, if you're interested in another chapter, just let me know, leave a comment here or on BGG or wherever you see that video. And I will definitely consider that. Again, a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there. Really do appreciate all your support. I will also announce the winner of the um, January giveaway. Yeah, I'm already relatively late, but I was rather busy, unfortunately. I will also announce the next giveaway for February, which again will be for my patrons and channel members exclusively. So again, if you want to find out what it is, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon or here on YouTube directly and you can win yourself a nice little game. And yeah, with that being said, really hope you uh, enjoyed my little playthrough of Anno 1800 here and hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And yeah, until then, bye bye.